Hey everybody, Martin here and welcome to the new video on my channel. And this time I'll be showing you how to significantly speed up your rendering of volumetrics in Blender, like dust or fog, which is often very slow. And we will do that by combining cycles and EV passes. In my scenes, I run into this problem a lot. I have these guys here marching over this very flat field uh, with a very flat background. Oh, uh, there's a car here. <laughs> and some half-buried 2D soldiers on planes. Uh, I'm sure by now you've already used to the fact that my scenes are often laughably simple. Uh, so yeah, I have my main hero in the front, the army behind him, but there is something missing. Of course, anytime there's a lot of people marching, there's a lot of dust raised into the air. So I've made a very simple dust element, cut off on the sides. Uh, here you can see the node graph, and in my CG Boost Master 3D Environments course, I go in depth over how I've created it. Alternatively, all my Hippaspist and Hoplite patrons get to download this dust for free. Anyway, I have this dust and I put it into my scene. It looks wonderful, all those volumetrics and light scattering. Uh, there's just one little problem, the rendering takes forever. Don't know about you, but this slowness of volumetrics in Blender cycles was always really off-putting for me. So much so that I rather stayed away from it altogether. Well, that was until Eevee came along and it featured amazing volumetric options in real time. I experimented with combining various render passes and then Zach Reinhardt from CG Boost actually told me that you can combine cycles and Eevee elements in one render. So let's switch to EV. And yeah, number of problems. First off, my soldiers do not look as good in EV as they do in cycles. Uh, so that's why I will render them in cycles. Also, my freaking dust disappeared. So what to do? Let me turn this off so that we have just the dust. And well, since my scene is basically lit just by one HDR image and EV in fact cannot source as much lighting data from the HDR as Cycles does, uh, the dust is there, it just isn't visible. We need to add some more lighting to our scene to make it pop up. Uh, see, when I added a really strong spot lamp shining onto it from the direction of the sun, it's right back. And that's actually much better. On the spotlight, you can actually adjust also the distance that it will illuminate your scene. So you don't really need to make it shine all over your scene. It doesn't really look as good as in cycles, but it renders instantly. However, we can improve the rendering settings for it a little bit. So if you go into this volumetric settings and lower the tile size to four or two, if you're hardware can handle it. Uh, and also, let's activate these volumetric shadows. Now that's better, isn't it? To save performance, you can also play with the clipping. I do recommend clipping your volumetrics to only what you need to see in your scene. In my case, it was around 40 meters. Uh, and after that, it didn't really add that much depth into my render, so I left it there. To put this onto my Cycles render, I put my final scene onto two collections. One was the Scene collection and the other one a Dust collection. And up here, there are these menus. And the chance is, if you're a new Blender user, you've never used these before. I know I haven't for a long time, until I've realized how powerful they are for exactly what we're about to do. So first off, let's name this scene Cycles because we want to render all this using cycles. And everything that you set in the rendering setup for this scene will stay saved for it. Then we have this render layer option and that basically tells your render which collections you want to have active for this particular render layer. So as mentioned, I have activated everything except for the dust collection. So since this render layer features everything uh, in the scene, let's name it scene. Though I know it may be a bit confusing, because this on the left, uh, the settings, is also called the scene. Rest assured, it's just coincidence, because I named this collection scene, and I wanted my render layer to be named the same. Alright, and then I want to have a second scene, rendered in Eevee, and only with the dust collection visible. I do that by creating a new linked scene here, name it Eevee, and switch to Eevee. 
and then leave all the settings we've set when we've prepared the dust. And in here then, I created a new layer, named it dust, and on it I activated only the dust. Let's see how it looks. And no, this is not actually what we want. We basically want to put the dust over our soldiers, but if we do it like this, it will only cover them and it will not take into account their distance from the camera. So in fact, let me open up this menu. In here, enable this restriction override, which is called holdout. Then activate the scene collection and use the holdout for it. What it basically does is that everything in this collection will not be visible, rather it will just poke a hole into the alpha of our render. I think it will be easier to show you. Yeah, see? That's much better and that's how you composite dust over your images. One thing for this to work, if you have sub-collections in your scene collection, you need to activate this holdout override for each of them. In the current version of Blender, it's not enough to activate it just for the parent collection. Yeah, this functionality could be improved, in my opinion. And now we have a perfect dust pass, and if we put this over our cycles render, it will fit perfectly. Let me quickly show you how to do it in the compositor. To put this together, let's jump into our compositor, and here you can actually combine the two passes. You just take this render layers window, set one for cycles and the render layer for scene, and then duplicate it and set the other one to EV and dust layer. And you can always render these render layer nodes with this button here. I then added one alpha over node and put the scene render into first socket and the dust into second socket and output everything into the composition node. And with that, I got this. And you can of course play around with the coloring and the intensity of the dust, for example by adding this curves node and raising the curve up. This simple trick works wonderfully for whenever you have some volumetric atmospherics in your scene, like fog, dust, smoke, uh, clouds, or even atmospheric layer. So that's it for this short tip. And if you want to see how I've made this scene, you can actually jump onto my Patreon. And there I will be adding several step-by-step -step tutorials where I'll take you through its whole creation. Oh, and before you go, I would like to mention that finally, after a year of hard work, I'm finished with my environment course over at CG Boost. It now features 12 hours of lessons, seven different workflows for environment creation in Blender, and all that without using paid add-ons or resources. And if you hurry up, you can still get it in its early access with a 25% discount. So stay creative, my friends, and until next time, Martin out.